What's up YouTube, King Marnold here, and today I have a Rubik's Cube for the third installment of Minigame Monday. And of course, this is a fully functional redstone Rubik's Cube as it will fully work with our set of 12 inputs. There are, th this row right here turns the respective colored faces clockwise. So this button turns the red face clockwise, the orange face will go clockwise, and then this row back here are the respective colors counterclockwise inputs. And you can tell which face is which color because the middle square never changes, it never moves. So if I want to turn the blue face uh, clockwise, I'll press the blue button and it will turn clockwise. And uh, if I want to undo that, I'll turn that counterclockwise. And for convenient teleporting, I put these black buttons in. This will teleport me clockwise over to the other side of the cube. And you can keep teleporting around until you get the angle on the cube that you like. Or you can also teleport uh, down, which is the blue button. And now you can look up at the Rubik's Cube. I have all eight corners on the cube covered, so you can teleport wherever you want. And... Yeah, so I'll just show you more of the cube moving. So red clockwise, uh, orange there. You can just move it however you want. And uh, you can reset the cube as well. I did put that feature in here. And the cube is reset. I also put a randomize function. You just press this, and it will automatically randomize the cube. Now the button uh, does... Uh, 18 randomized moves and it's completely random obviously and that that's not like a magic number when the cubes perfectly are considered random rather but uh, I, I just put that in because it kind of I didn't want to do it too long for the video but I believe 40 is generally considered a number at which the cube is uh, considered random so you can just press the randomize Q button twice if you would like to randomize it any more than that. But I also put an inside the cube perspective and uh, that button wasn't working. <laughs> I think this one will work. Yeah, right here. Now we're inside the cube and uh, yeah, you can solve the cube from inside. I did put uh, inputs in here. So there's the green face we can rotate the green face there and that'll move and uh, yeah it is fully functional and now I'll show you the redstone behind it and we'll take a dip into this hole here is all the redstone and it's it's somewhat compact for the intricacy of the cube but uh, this is the redstone that actually controls it I'm not gonna bother trying to explain this part of the redstone but I made like a conceptual uh, mini part of the redstone over here. This doesn't actually control the cube, but I made it just to aid me in explaining. So what's happening is over there, uh, I made a diagram of the cube and laid it out. So as we can see here, these are the six faces of the cube laid out in a two-dimensional kind of way to make it easier for me to perform the manipulations I need to do. This would be a smaller cube, and then this is that same small cube rolled out. So I'll show you what kind of happens, and you can kind of see how it works. But I'll press this button, and it will basically slide the row down. And this is just one of the 12 movements here. And uh, I'll kind of explain what's going on here. But basically what's happening is we're sliding this row down three at a time, and that performs the... Uh, that performs the movement for the cube and what happens is these command blocks what they do is they test the respective wool block so this row of command blocks is testing for that wool block right there if it's white it'll pop up a white block right there and we'll move it again if it's blue it'll pop up a blue block right there now this block uh, represents where I'm teleporting the wool to up above it's actually in the cube over here and the reason or th this is actually the same exact concept that's being displayed over here except what I did was I spread it out so like this is one part of a face this is the second and this is the third part of a face and it goes down over there and as well up there and the reason I spread it out was so that I could fit this unit right here so that I could test for block 
for each uh, wool block yet still be able to use relative coordinates in the command blocks. That's kind of confusing to understand, but those who are advanced in redstone will understand why. But uh, basically that's the same concept that I displayed over here. I'll just press that again and uh, that'll turn to yellow and that's kind of how this is working. Now there are six different paths that uh, or six different manipulations similar to this on this layout that I do and each manipulation goes two different ways for clockwise and counterclockwise and you just have to think about the Rubik's Cube of which ways they actually move in real life. And this is the randomized cube function and uh, I've shown this in other videos. I also have a tutorial video explaining how this works, but basically here's the input and the sheep will just randomly uh, land on these command blocks which will trigger a random turning of the face. And that, th this is just, uh, I got really lazy so I just made a big line of repeaters to tell it when to stop, but uh, it's kind of messy. But that's how that works, and uh, that's pretty much how the redstone works. So I'll just give you one final look at the cube, and that will conclude the third edition of Minigame Monday. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.